Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So every year for the last couple of years, I've been making myself a birthday cake. Obviously I've also been having a Colin the Caterpillar cake as well. I'm not mad, but I thought I would show you what I'm making this year. And I decided to do a birthday cheesecake this year. So what I've already done so far is I've lined the base of a loose bottomed round tin and I'm now crushing 200 grams of malted milk biscuits into crumbs. As you can see, I did this a few different ways, but I actually found that just using a pestle and mortar works best. It gives you a really fine crumbs. I'm just weighing out 100 grams of salted butter and I'm gonna pop that into the microwave just for about 30 seconds, just so that all melts through. And then I actually forgot a step here. You actually want to add two tablespoons of caster sugar to your breadcrumb, uh, breadcrumb, biscuit crumb mix. Um, and I do that in a second, just after I've realized I've forgotten. It's just easier to add it to the biscuit crumb just so that it's all mixed in properly. And then you just want to add your biscuit crumbs to your melted butter. Can be in sections, can be all at once, doesn't really matter. I just did it in sections because I had a small bowl. You want to pour that into the bottom of your round tin. You want to make sure that you spread this round really evenly and it's completely level. It can be up a little bit on the sides. If you've got a slightly smaller tin, then that does look quite nice if you just sort of crush it up against the sides a little bit more. But it's most important that it's a nice, a nice even base around the whole of the tin. You want to then put that in the fridge whilst you make your fillings. So I did this actually the wrong way around. So you've got two different cheesecake fillings to make. You've got a white chocolate one and a milk chocolate one. So I would advise that you actually do the milk chocolate one first, even though I'm here doing the white chocolate one first. Just do this the opposite way around as I've written in the recipe below. So there I have mixed 300 grams of full fat soft cheese, 150 millilitres of double cream and 300 grams of white chocolate and I've whisked that together with a hand whisk just because I wanted to use a hand whisk and a KitchenAid so that I could whisk them both relatively at the same time. And then this happened. So as you could see there, my hand mixer that I was using, that was actually my mum's 21st birthday present, started just smoke, just bellowing out of it. I don't know if it was on fire, I think it just short circuited, but I had to just take it out. So it was a good job that I do have my KitchenAid. Um, but that was a little bit sad, a little bit of a funeral for the whisk there. Anyway, let's get back to the recipe. Now I am whisking together 300 grams of full fat soft cheese, 150 millilitres of double cream, 200 grams of milk chocolate, three tablespoons of caster sugar, and two tablespoons of malt powder or Horlicks. I'm just pouring in that melted milk chocolate that I've just popped through the microwave. You want to mix that together just so it's all combined, it doesn't have to be, it's a little bit fluffy. So yeah, I think that hand whisk was its sort of final goodbye. It made my birthday cheesecake and then was like, nope, I'm off. Always watch out for appliances, especially when you're using really, really old ones and they're probably full of cake batter. I actually found the hand whisk um, a lot easier to use in this situation just because you could sort of get around the bowl. So anyway, I am lining onto my base the milk chocolate cheesecake mixture. And on top of that, I am putting the white chocolate cheesecake mixture. So you want it to be two levels. Be really careful when you're spreading the white chocolate mixture, just so that you don't go into the milk chocolate layer too much. I would just plop all of the mixture on top and then just slowly spread it around really gently. And that is basically it. So what I decided to do, I just wanted to make the top look a little bit more even and I couldn't really see or spin it from down below. So I decided to just get my turntable out and just do that quickly, um, just to see how nicely I could make the top of it. I just spread all of the mixture out to the edges and then I just decided to turn it as I sort of scraped around, make it a little bit shallower on the outside. And then just decided to do it a bit like when you're making a rose out of icing, where you sort of just go, a long way you finish your stroke all the way to the middle looks a bit messy but um yeah looks a bit messy but it's okay because we're going to cover it in maltesers so uh, i'm just popping maltesers all around the edge of the cake 
This cake was so nice. The malt powder works so well with the malted biscuits on the bottom and the Maltesers on the top. It all just works together really well. I loved it so, so much. It's super indulgent, so you definitely don't need a big piece of this. It's a super treat, but really, really, really nice. And that is it. So you want to chill it for at least five hours before you eat it. But other than that, it's all good to go. And yeah, I think that's all really to say about it. Really nice. Yes, it does annoy me that I put an odd amount of Maltesers in that left hand corner. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my 2020 birthday cake baking video. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do another one of these next year so that I can see what I decide to make next year. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week with another video.